what I'm really here to talk about is um, what fish are going to benefit from having fish passage here. One of the first questions I often get asked is about why they can't use the actual lock uh, that you can see over my left shoulder. Um, the reason is, is quite obvious if you're a fish in the sense that they will follow the flow and as you can see behind me the flow is predominantly coming down from the weir and the, and the water is actually st stagnant or stable in front of the lock. Um, the lock water only moves when a boat comes through so that means that any passage uh, and attraction for fish is only there for a very short period of time so basically fish miss the entrance. Now the fish pass that we're building here as part of the Unlocking the Seven project is for the shad, twait, the twait shad. Um, now the great thing about shad is that if you can build a fish pass for them as they're great swimmers but not jumpers it will benefit all other kinds of fish. So historically salmon have always managed to get over Diglas Weir. They can jump o over it and they may be delayed for, for a number of days or even months um, but they will get over it eventually. But a lot of other fish can't get over there at all and a lot of these fish are actually critically endangered such as the European eel. Um, they really struggle to get over weir, weir faces with that amount of water coming through. They'll be able to use the fish pass um, and the lampreys, the sea and river lamprey will also be able to get through the fish pass um, and We've done tracking work and it's shown that lamprey have only really been able to go upstream in years when there's been a good flow over the river. But um, this will allow them to get upstream as far as Shrewsbury every year, so that'll be great. The other fish that will really benefit are the coarse fish species, which are the predominantly angled fish on, on the River Severn. So the barbel and the chub, um, which like to spawn over gravels, they'll be able to move upstream uh, and use the whole of the river. Um, and all the other fish that you don't really think are migrat migratory, like perch and pike, um, and, and even the small fish like minnows will, will also use it and, and, and bleak because the, the river and the flow through the fish pass will be so low that they will just treat it like a part of the river. There's three reasons why fish move and that is for feeding, uh, reproduction and for safety, so getting away from predators. Um, so they move all year for various reasons. Um, so the spring is the predominant time when fish move to spawn um, for the coarse fish species and for the shads. Salmon will move right through the autumn and the winter as well, so this is almost peak spawning uh, time as we go now into late October. They'll be moving up through the river now. Um, and then during the winter time, lots of fish will move throughout the river system um, to allow them to move from areas which were good for feeding in the summer but are actually quite dangerous and hostile in the winter and so they'll move into the deeper sections of the river and move upstream using the fish passes then. So when it is open and there is a viewing gallery there the chief time for seeing fish through there will be from April, May, June and July uh, and there will be other fish that will move around at other times of the year but being cold-blooded they need the warmer water to actually help them move through the river. The, the weir you see behind me is a, is a man-made structure um, and although fish can get over this, uh, as we were saying, salmon can get over this, this structure, anything that causes delay causes a problem. It makes them use up um, energy reserves that they should really be converting into eggs and using for spawning. Um, so anything that delays them and causes them to jump multiple times, it can cause mechanical injury as they land on the, on the structure and they come back down and also uses up their, their fat reserves as they try and go, go upstream um, multiple times. So what we really want to see in a river is allow a salmon to go all the way upstream with as minimal effort as it can so it arrives in its spawning grounds in October, November with as much energy left as possible to allow it to convert it either to eggs or to allow the spawning to take place, the building of the reds for them to bury the eggs. And if they get through with still reserves then a number of those salmon will return to sea. Around about 10% of Atlantic salmon will make it all the way back down river, back out to sea start feeding again and will hopefully return the following year which is great for for genetic diversity and also for um, helping the population allowing them to spawn more than once.